Miss Hernandez here. I'm in my room today because all my family is home, so it's a little louder in the house. So I had to find somewhere quiet so I could record our read aloud today. We're gonna be back in our novel, Island of the Blue Dolphins by Scott O'Dell. And we are on chapter 23 today. I'm very excited to see what happens. So let's get into it. Chapter 23. The hunters left many wounded otter behind them. Some floated and died on the shore, and others I killed with my spear since they were suffering and could not live. But I found a young otter that was not badly hurt. It lay in a bed of bull kelp and would have paddled by if Rontu had not barked. A strand of kelp was wound around its body, and I thought it was sleeping, for often before they go to sleep they anchor themselves in this way to keep from drifting off. Then I saw there was a deep gash across its back. The otter did not try to swim away as I drew near and reached over the side of the canoe. They have large eyes, especially when they are young, but this ones were so large from fear and pain that I could see my reflection in them. I cut the kelp that held it and took it to the tide pool behind the reef, which was sheltered from the waves. Tide pool, and these are shallow bodies of water that kind of form near the shore where there's a lot of rocks. And often in these tide pools, you'll see animals like starfish, abalone would be there too, usually hooked to the rocks. Um, and you'll just see a lot of rocks there and a lot of cool things live inside of these tide pools. So I wanted you to see what Karana was looking at. And I wanted to ask, have you ever seen a tide pool? And if so, where? The day was calm after the storm and I caught two fish along the reef. I was careful to keep them alive because otter will not eat anything that is dead and left them in the pool. This was early in the morning. That afternoon, I went back to the pool. The fish had disappeared and the young otter was asleep floating on its back. I did not try to treat its wound with herbs because salt water heals and the herbs would have washed off anyway. I brought two fish every day and left them in the pool. The otter would not eat while I was watching. Then I brought four fish and these all disappeared and finally six, which seemed to be the right number. I brought them whether the day was calm or stormy. The otter grew and its wound began to heal, but still it stayed in the pool. And now when I came, it would be waiting for me and would take the fish from my hand. The pool was not big and it could easily have gotten out and away into the sea, yet it stayed there and slept or waited for me to come with food. The young otter now was the length of my arm and very glossy. It had a long nose that came to a point and many whiskers on each side and the largest eyes I have ever seen. They would watch me all the time I was at the pool, following me whatever I did, and when I said something, they would move around in a very funny way. In a way, too, that made pain come to my throat, because they were gay and sad also. I had to stop and talk about the otter that Karana was taking care of, because sea otters are one of my favorite animals ever. They're so cute, and they have funny little personalities. And so here in this picture, there's a baby sea otter with its mommy sea otter. And I wanted you to kind of observe and see what differences do you notice between the baby sea otter and the mommy sea otter? Because Karana talks about the sea otter growing up and she talks about how it's kind of changing. What are those differences between a baby sea otter and a grown-up sea otter? For a long time I called it otter as I had called Rontu dog. Then I decided to give the otter a name. The name was Manani, which means little boy with large eyes. It was a hard task catching fish every day, especially if the wind was blowing and the waves were high. Once, when I would, could catch only two and drop them into the pool, Mana, Manani ate them quickly and waited for me. When he found that it was all and had he swam around in circles, looking at me reproachfully. The waves were so high the next day that I could not fish on the reef, even at low tide, and since I had nothing to give him, I did not go to the pool. It was three days before I could catch fish, and when, when I went there again, the pool was deserted. I knew that he would leave some day, but I felt bad that he had gone back to the sea and that I could never catch fish for him again. Nor would I know him if I saw him again in the kelp, for now that he had grown and his wound had healed, he looked like all the others. Soon after the Lutes had left, I moved back to the headland. Nothing had been harmed except the fence, which I mended, and in a few days the house was the same as before. The only thing that worried me was all the abalones I had gathered in the summer were gone. I would need to live from day to day on what I could catch, trying to get enough vocab word time. Okay, so on this page, there's a word that says reproachfully, 
R-E-P-R-O-A-C-H-F-U-L-L-Y. Whew, sounds like a long word. Reproachfully. And I want you to think about what this word means. So I'm going to reread the sentence, but I also want you to look at, remember those root words, right? And prefixes and suffixes. So if you break down the word, it might help you figure out what it means. So the sentence is, when he found that was all I had, he swam around in circles, looking at me reproachfully. So again, listen to the sentence and then try to break down that word, right? I see a prefix, R-E, reproach, maybe you know what that means, that's a root word, or fully, F-U-L-L-Y here is the suffix, and maybe that can tell you what the word means. So there's all these clues about what this word might mean, so try to figure it out. On the days when I could fish, to last through the times when I could not. Through the first part of the winter, before Manani swam away, this was sometimes hard to do. Afterwards, it was not so hard, and Rantu and I always had enough to eat. While the Aleuts were on the island, I had no chance to catch little smelts and dry them, so the nights that winter were dark and I went to bed early and worked only during the day. But still, I made another string for my fishing spear, many hooks of abalone shell, and last of all earrings to match the necklace Tutok had given me. These took a long time, for I searched the beach many mornings when the tide was out before I found two pebbles of the same color as the stones in the necklace and soft enough to cut. The holes in the earrings took even more time, for the stones were hard to hold, but when I was done and had rubbed them bright in the sun in the fine sand and water and fastened them with bone hooks to fit my ears, they were very pretty. On sunny days, I would wear them with my cormorant dress and the necklace and walk along the cliff with Rontu. I often thought of Tutok, but on these days especially, I would look off into the north and wish that she were here to see me. I could hear her talking in her strange language, and I would make up things to say to her and things for her to say to me. So these are smelts. So Karana says while the Aleuts were on the island, she had no chance of catching little smelts and dry them. And in my head, I was wondering, what are smelts? It sounds like something smelly. And I did think they were fish, but I didn't know what they looked like, so I wanted to look it up. And here they are. They're little tiny fish. They kind of remind me of anchovies. Have any of you had anchovies? Ugh, I don't like them. And just like that, we're at the end of chapter 23. I enjoyed this short little chapter. Um, I love when they give more detail about her life on the island. And she seems to make friends with a lot of like the wildlife there. And I personally am an animal lover, so I love that part of it. If I was her alone on an island, I also would be taking care of the animals and making them my pets and friends. And so her little relationship with the otter was so cute. And I'm sad that he left and she didn't get to feed him before he was gone. But I hope you enjoyed this chapter as much as me. And I'll see you for chapter 24. Yeah.